Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach from electricalexamcoach.com. And this is lesson 8.1 in our video series. We're gonna be in article 240 and we're gonna be learning all about overcurrent protective devices. You'll hear me use the term O, C, P, D throughout the rest of the program. And all it stands for is over current protective devices. But to simplify it even further, just think about it like this. Anytime you see OCPD, it just means breakers and fuses. Whether it's the individual breaker at a branch circuit, 20 amp, or it's a 100 amp feeder breaker, or our main 200 amp disconnect. It's either going to be a breaker or fuse, and they're all OCPD. Let's get to it. Table 240.6a is one of my favorite tables in the NEC. It's where we get our standard ampere ratings from. And although it seems like the least of all the tables, it's very powerful throughout the electrical industry. Anytime we come to a new table, we always read the black bolt heading to make sure that we're in the right table. Standard ampere ratings for breakers and fuses. Starting on the left hand side is where it starts with our numbers. You should pull your code book out and look at it now. If you're in the 2023 and later, it's going to start with 10 amps and go up. And in the 2020 and previous, it's going to start with 15 amps and go up. And then it goes up by fives, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And when we get to 50, it starts jumping by tens and even larger numbers as we move up in amperage. The reason that this table is so important is it unifies the entire electrical industry. The manufacturers make these size breakers. The stores stock these size breakers. Installers purchase these size breakers. And when we are doing our load calculations in the NEC, these are the sizes that we're actually going to use. We're going to learn all about it in this lesson. Table 240.6a, standard ampere ratings for breakers and fuses. Let's get to it. Let's look at the major points for general overcurrent protective devices. I say general for a reason because there are other parts of the code that modify, change, or erase the things that I'm getting ready to teach you. A good example is when we get to motor overload devices. But these rules that we're getting ready to learn apply blanket across the NEC unless another section tells you otherwise. The first one is the next size up rule. And that's the next standard size on that table that we just learned about. Let's imagine that we have a 59 amp known load. And for the rest of the program, I'm gonna call it known load. And there's a reason that you'll learn about here in a minute. But do they make a 59 amp breaker? They don't, do they? What we would do is we would go to our table, 240.6a, and we're gonna look at the next standard size. So we go 15, 20, 30, and then we look here and we see 50, and then in between 50, there's no 55, and it jumps to 60. If we have a 59 amp load, we're going to choose a 60 amp overcurrent protective device. Now that may not feel good at first when you first start wiring and learning this stuff, but later we'll understand that there are rules in place when we get to sizing our wire that are gonna make it so everything's okay and we're totally protected. The next major point is going to be continuous loads at 125%. There are two different names that you may see, continuous load or continuous duty. A continuous load is defined as expected to run for three or more hours at full current. And in the exam prep world, it's gonna look like this. You have a load that's known to run for five hours, you know, what would the blah, 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 and it'll ask you for wire size or breaker size or it might say five hours or 10 hours. It doesn't matter how many hours it is, if it's three or more, it's considered a continuous load. You may also hear the word indefinitely. Just to try to throw you off, they might use the term indefinitely. Well, it falls under the same classification of needing a 125% multiplier. Remember, it's just another demand factor. Let's do an example. Let's take our 59 amp known load from before, and let's imagine that it was told to us that it's a 59 amp continuous load. What we would do is we would take our 59 amps, multiply it by 1.25, then we have a new known load of 73.75. 
that old load is gone. The 59 is gone. The 73.75 is our new known load. And that's what we would go size our breaker and subsequently our wire buy. How we would do that is head to table 240.6a. We're going to look at the next standard size. So we're above 70 and it jumps to 80. And we would put this on an 80 amp overcurrent protective device. Our final major point is going to be that the overcurrent protective device equals the service size. Let me explain what I mean. Let's imagine that we did a whole house load calculation and it equaled 180 amps. Well, now we have to size the main breaker for that house, don't we? For that, we're going to head to table 240.6a and we're going to choose the next standard size. We put it on a 200 and we're done. But the question is, is what size is the service? Is it based off like the rating of the equipment bus? Maybe it's a 225 rated. No, it's actually based off the size of the main breaker or main fuse for that structure. So this would in fact be a 200 amp service. The load calculation dictated what size breaker we used and the breaker size that we used dictated the size of the service. And this is very important as we get farther into the program. That's it for lesson 8.1. You can head over to electricalexamcoach.com to unlock the practice quizzes and everything in the ECC Testing Center. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it.